Cartoons like Gundam, Voltron, and even Gillian were some of my favorites growing up. So suffice it to say, I was really excited about the launch of Hawken, which was a mech game that was supposed to offer VR support. Working in the industry, I got to try it briefly at a preview event running on the Oculus Rift DK2 many years back. While I enjoyed what little I played of the mech shooter, Hawken was ultimately shut down and VR support was never officially implemented. This was really disappointing to hear, but I thought we'd get a bunch of other mech shooters by now, considering VR is such a great fit for the genre. Unfortunately, it's been pretty quiet on that front. Until now. Archangel Hellfire is out, and it kicks ass. While developer Skydance Interactive released the VR mech shooter Archangel last summer, it was an on-rail single-player experience. It was designed this way to mitigate motion sickness, but many fans cried out for a mech shooter that offered more freedom to move about the environment. They also wanted multiplayer. Well, in Archangel Hellfire, you get both and the game has become arguably the best mech shooter as a result. Archangel Hellfire is able to stand on the shoulder of mech games before it. Here is Skydance Interactive Programmer Pablo Leon Luna explaining how the team learned from other mech games. You saw evolution, you saw games like Hawken, you saw Chrome Hounds on Xbox, and we've seen lots of different iterations on the, on the mech, uh, in the mech world since then. And so we've obviously looked at all those games and we respect a lot of them and we try to take elements of what they do and see how that can work in the VR space. Now, to preface this early on, if you're looking for a realistic simulation style mech game that supports HOTAS controllers or intricate peripherals, then Archangel Hellfire is not that game. It certainly airs more on the arcadey side, but that doesn't mean it lacks depth. I'll talk more on that later. Hellfire currently supports up to 2v2 players across three maps. You've got a desert level, an ice base, and a cityscape environment. In the game, you're not the mech, but you're the pilot inside the machine. This provides a handful of benefits. One, sitting inside the cockpit mitigates simulation sickness. Furthermore, it allows you to toggle controls within the cockpit that allow you to tweak augments to damage output, shields, speed, and energy, which allows you to boost through the air for longer distances. Being a person inside the mech also makes the experience more immersive. By decoupling your in-game hand from your robotic hand, it allows the massive mech to move about more realistically. In terms of mechanics, you use a joystick or touchpad to move and aim with your motion controllers. There are six different mechs that span heavy, medium, and light classes, all of which offer unique weapons and alternate guns. Both arms are also equipped with shields that recharge over time. On top of that, every mech has two special ultimate abilities. Some of these abilities will allow you to cloak, rain down Hellfire missiles from above, think Farah from Overwatch, EMP blasts which disables enemy abilities, and more. To build up these ults, you'll need to jet around the map to pick up energy, and you'll want to do that because your special abilities can certainly turn the tide of the game. At the same time though, jetpacking costs energy, so you'll need to find a balance that works for you. Hellfire offers a ton of depth that rivals the best VR has to offer. It's not all about aiming dexterity here. Knowing what tactics to use at any given time means the difference between being a winner and a loser. For instance, I found it effective to boost up my shield and damage sliders when I'm engaging in combat. And after I vaporize an enemy and am badly bruised, I'll turn off my energy and speed sliders to zip around and pick up health and energy packs as I wait for the enemy to respawn. Of course, you could also granularly toggle the power sliders to fit your playstyle and class as you see fit. Considering the shields need to recover after taking sustained damage, coupled with the fact that your guns have to cool down, I also found it best to alternate shielding and firing. Conversely, you can also choose to go guns a blazing or off the double shield in an enemy's raining fire. To circumvent an enemy's shield, it's best to try and gang up on an enemy so that you or your teammate can shoot your opponent in the back, where you'll deal more damage. Headshots also deal increased damage. Adding to the beauty of combat are a wide array of weapons. Depending on the mech, there's lasers, machine guns, shotguns, heat-seeking rockets, and more. You're bound to find something that works for you. Visually, Archangel Hellfire looks really good. It certainly wears its Transformers and Pacific Rim inspiration on its sleeve. The game also does a good job presenting a tremendous sense of scale. You really feel like you're traversing the landscape in a hulking six-story mech, which just feels really cool. The sound effects are also fantastic with bombastic explosion and gunfire littered throughout the matches. Okay, 
It's also cool that your mech has an AI assistant that will let you know when you're taking too much damage and informs you when your ultimate abilities are ready. It sort of makes you feel like you're piloting a mech in Pacific Rim as a result. Ready to activate the in three, two, one. This makes the experience a little cooler. That's not to say Archangel Hellfire is perfect. Perhaps my biggest gripe with the game is that waiting for a multiplayer match can be a pain in the ass. It just kind of feels like you're wasting bits of your life when you've got a headset strapped to your face with nothing to do or interesting to look at. It would help if users could momentarily hop into an arena to engage in some target practice or fight some bots while matchmaking does its thing. I think this could also create a larger pool of players who are willing to wait for matches. Beyond that, I think there are a couple small additions I would make to the game. I think it would be nice if Hellfire incorporated some sort of map or coordinate system so that you could let your ally know where enemies are. Perhaps something similar to what PUBG uses. As it is right now, calling the location of adversaries isn't particularly clear. Moving on, while the game is inspired by Pacific Rim, the movie's mechs often engage in melee combat. There is no melee combat in Hellfire, and I think it would be really visceral to be able to punch an enemy to disable his shields in the game. I think it would add yet another element of depth, and would be oh so satisfying, considering it feels a little clunky when two opposing mechs are right next to each other. And on the topic of Pacific Rim, I think it would be awesome if you could fight Kaiju in the game. Come on Skydance, make it happen. Like all great competitive games, Archangel Hellfire is easy to get into, hard to master. The base PvP multiplayer is also completely free, so there's no reason you shouldn't be playing it. The paid version unlocks co-op gameplay, more mech skins, plus the single player Archangel campaign. Considering Hellfire is just so much damn fun though, it's a game well worth supporting. I want to thank all my patrons who helped make this crowdfunded video possible. If you like this video and want to see more content like it, please consider donating to my Patreon via the link in the description, where you'll get early access to videos, written content, and more.